Assalamu alaikum. I hope you all are ready because, uh, you know, I'm always ready. I was born ready uh, for what? What was I born ready? Oh, I was born ready for hashtag LNT uh, and uh, episode 5 today sank uh, in French. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Uh, you know, knock on. Is this wood? Knock on wood. Episode 5 hashtag LNT live from the holy city of Karbala. If this suit looks familiar, well, you already watched the promo. I was wearing the same suit. But anyways, um, I would like to welcome you to another episode of Hashtag LNT where moi, Ahmed Ali, gets to present uh, and, and tell you what's good around the world. But before we get to t jump in into what's today's episode, let's go and check out what's trending because tonight it's very interesting. So let's go and do that. Once again, we do welcome everybody uh, who... We're trying to kick it off, right? And uh, if uh, what is actually very interesting because um, if you're thinking of climbing a mountain, you know, for those who actually want to work out, uh, climbing a mountain isn't something like it's not just a walk in, walk in the park. The very fit people, very healthy people are able to do that. Well, if, if you thought and if I thought that was the case, then we're wrong. A double amputee, 69 year old um, Chinese person, was able to climb M Mount Everest um, after his fifth attempt uh, on May 14th. Uh, and I think personally, one of the uh, things that uh, w motivated him or, or uh, actually inspired him to go uh, climb that mountain on that day was, it's, it was my birthday. Um, so, you know, he was like, you know what, I got to go do this because uh, it's, it's Ahmed Ali's birthday. Uh, although no one wished me happy birthday, I'm kidding, a lot of people wished me. Uh, but, you know, one of the reasons, I'm kidding. Um, but this person was able to reach the tip of Mount Everest on um, May 14th uh, of this year. So, nothing is impossible, guys. If this guy, Dumbo Amputee, can do that, anyone can accomplish something. Now. Uh, yeah, mad process is trending. A few, a f a few um, episodes ago, uh, we were talking about, uh, a few episodes ago, we were talking about a, a, a topic about gambling. One of the episodes was about gambling. Uh, and uh, we said you're going to spend your money, you're going to spend your time, uh, and you might not win. Uh, well, in this case, in California, uh, Antulio was lucky, was one of the luckiest person, one of the luckiest people on this planet. This guy went into the casino with a thousand dollars, came out with six million dollars. This guy right there, he looks funny, but you know, mad props to him. Uh, he's one rich guy with six million dollars, uh, thanks to his luck, although that says five million, so five million dollars. Um, wow. Uh, 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 if gambling brings you that money, then astaghfirullah, we're not gambling. Um, but um, one lucky guy. Uh, but that's it. That's what's trending. Let's go check out uh, what's today's, what today's topic is all about. Because trust me when I say, if you saw the poster, tonight we're having fun. Anyways, um, just a short break and we're back very short. So just stay tuned. Welcome back, dear viewers. Hope you, inshallah, enjoyed that little transition, 10 second transition of hashtag LNT. Just to remind you guys that we are live from the holy city of Karbala. Uh, and tonight is another special night in Ramadan. And another night for you guys to, uh, you know, to get a chance to win a free ziyarah, free trip to Karbala uh, on our house. Now, human reproduction organs, reproductive organs, have existed ever since person was a baby you know if, if you didn't know that uh, then I really don't know where you're living um, but or I don't know if you have them or not but anyways I'm kidding uh, but they've been there ever since uh, we were babies however babies don't or, or individuals don't get to use them until the age of 18 to 20 at least I hope they don't use them although I do know that 
uh, many people use them, um, before the age of 18. Now, once a toddler begins to differentiate between the male and female organs, he or she will start to question a lot of things. You know, the boy will go up to his father, ask him about his organ, uh, and uh, the girl will, will, all do, will also do the same thing, but she will go up to her mother. Now, parents usually try to change the subject very, very quickly, and they're successful at it because the kids are, are naive. They're still young. They don't know um, that the parents are actually changing this, the subject. You know, they probably give them some candy or, you know, give them a treat, and then they'll just forget about it. However, as they grow older, the questions increase, and they need answers. A teenager is so stubborn. He needs answers right away. Right away. If he asks a question, right away he wants the answer. Now this time, changing the subject ain't gonna work. Now we all know that most of the Western countries, sex ed starts as early as the fifth grade. And it continues all through high school, middle school, high school. Um, and it gets into more detail. It goes into more detail. Now other parents, some parents think that, you know what, this is, this is a good idea uh, because they might feel embarrassed. They want their kids or they want someone else to teach their kid uh, about sexual education because they're embarrassed to talk to the kids about that, about that subject. However, other kids, other parents, um, they actually believe that they are the ones that, they sh that should teach their own kids about sexual uh, education rather uh, for their kids to go get information from you know the internet or from their schools or from their friends and so on and so forth and they try to keep the pace with their kids as they grow older now what do you guys think are your kids enrolled in sexual education classes or are they not if they are is it right for them and if they're not is it right for them and that's what tonight's question is all about is sexual education right for your friend for, for your friends you know is sexual education right for your kids how you can participate and how you can answer that question well it's very easily all you have to do is open whatsapp and dial the number shown right now plus nine six four seven seven four zero six seven eighteen thirty six and you will be able to answer that question and let us know what you think now when you do that and we're also live on Facebook as well, just to throw that out. We're live on Facebook. So you can comment there as well, uh, answering this question and giving your opinion on tonight's topic. Now, when you do call in, when you do send us a voice message, when you do send us a text message, or when you comment on Facebook during the live show, then your name will be written on these sticky notes right here. And they will be placed in this fishbowl right here for a chance to win a free trip to Karbala. A free exclusive trip to Karbala to come see me and to come see the shrine behind me and to come see the great things of Karbala and of course to you know to say what's up to the crew of hashtag LNT tonight actually fifth night of Ramadan I want to give an early shout out uh, to, to the guys in, in, in the studio we have Hassan Allah cameraman Ali Maytham cameraman uh, Hassan Asadi uh, director downstairs along with Sermad Al Husseini, also a director downstairs in the control room. We have Ali Jassim, co producer and scriptwriter. We have Hassan Hadi, sound engineer, Hassan Hasnawi, playback. Hassan Hasnawi, playback. Um, uh, we also have Samar, the technician. Uh, we also, who, do we, who else do we have? Uh, just everyone. If I forgot someone, uh, I apologize. But I already shout out, the guys told me to give them an early shout out. Um, but, anyways, tonight's topic is very interesting and sensitive at the same time so do join us and do participate in tonight's show to get a free trip to Karbala and who doesn't want a free trip I mean I take a free trip anywhere but no, I'm kidding but let's take a very short break and we're back very short so do stay tuned now once again once again salamun alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh this is Ahmed Ali Coming to you live from the holy city of Karbala on the late night talk hashtag LNT exclusive Ramadan series from the holy city of Karbala. As I mentioned, live, live, live. Your chance to win a free trip to Karbala. All you have to do is participate in tonight's episode and in the upcoming episode until the end of Ramadan. Every night, 
had a hashtag LNT is coming your way um, with very, very, very nice topic, uh, topics, uh, shall I say, uh, as we'll get to talk about tonight's topic is sexual education, is sex education right for your kids? All you have to do is pick up the phone, open WhatsApp, dial the number, uh, or you can send us a, a voice message or a written message, or you can comment on our Facebook live feed at lnt.show or at Imam Hussein 3 tv That's on Facebook uh, if you want to go search that. Now, to continue talking about uh, the, the topic that we chose today, is sex ed right for your kids? Sexual education, is it right for your kids or not? Now, kids are teenagers these days, especially with the material uh, being thrown at them uh, on TV, uh, on YouTube, on social media, uh, and on the websites that they use. And especially nowadays, kids are teens from the age of six or even five. Um, in my case, three, my child doesn't have a phone. Allow he doesn't have a phone, but he does use my phone to go on YouTube. With, with all the, the stuff that's being thrown at teenagers and kids these days, um, and you know, let's not forget society as well, also plays a big role in that. Um, they're not like the old generation. You know, the old generation didn't have YouTube. I mean, my dad didn't have a computer until like the 90s um, when, when computers came out. No one had the internet, no one had the access um, that this generation had or this generation has. So it's, it's, it's very important to also keep in mind that you know, your kids nowadays, you don't have to teach them how to go to YouTube, how to use the internet. They know how to use the internet. You know, my kid is three years old. And trust me when I say, when he, he, if, if I unlock my phone, he knows, and if the Wi-Fi is off, he knows to go turn the Wi-Fi on, go to YouTube, and go to a Dude Perfect video. Did you, did you listen to what I said? Three-year-old knows how to turn on the Wi-Fi and goes YouTube to try and check it out. Imagine what kids and teenagers know how to search, know how to ask the internet, especially with Ask Siri now. You can, you know, you don't even have to open your phone. You just ask Siri, hey Siri, and, and Siri's on. But anyways, let's turn it off. Anyways, what my point is, is that even kids at the young age know how to search about sexual education. Now, curiosity kicks in. Now, right now, we have kids going up to their parents asking them, Dad, Mom, where are babies coming from? And this is, actually, I, I've seen this where a kid goes up to his mom and dad or goes up to the teacher. Where do, do babies come from? And parents, at this moment, they're hesitant to tell them the reality uh, behind this. So what they do uh, is uh, they put their kids or they enroll their kids in sex education classes. Now as I mentioned earlier, sex education classes begin all the way from the fifth grade and then from, from the basics and then they move into um, showing them an actual birth uh, procedure, how a woman gives birth and explicit, they show them explicit material. This is actually very um, shocking to some parents, if you don't know that, because uh, when I was in elementary, they, they had to show us some of those things. Um, and then my parents, when I told my parents, they had to you know, take me on the side and talk to me about this class. Now, in a lot of countries, this has been done. Now, sexual health, sexual health is an interesting topic that captures the attentions of teenagers. Because honestly, trust me when I say teenagers, are into this kind of stuff right now. They like to explore what's out there. And especially, especially if the parents forbid their kid from doing something, it's a good thing, it's a good thing, but tell them why. Tell them the alternative. If you forbid and you say that's it, no, your kid is gonna go do it behind your back. And trust me when I say that. Now, they feel curious kids, teenagers, they feel curious about this kind of stuff. They need to know how babies are born, how they are um, being uh, born into life. Now, and if the parents don't actually teach their kids, their kids are going to go to friends, their kids are going to go to websites, they're going to go up to teachers, and they're going to go um, and, and to classes and confront, and being confronted 
by the reality. Now, if your children are attending sex ed classes, pay attention to this very closely. Now, sex ed classes during high school become mixed, boys and girls together. And therefore, all the material that's being taught, it's being taught to both sexes at the same time. And this tends to generate a sexual atmosphere within the class, within the classroom. As the main topic is sex. Now, it makes the guy look at the girl, smile, then wink, wink, then astaghfirullah comes after. And then, you know, kids being born when the girl is less than 18 years old, as we can see um, in, in, in the West and even in the East as well. And this, this, this is a very important topic as well. And to add to that, to add to that, some schools out there, and you can just go to Google and search it, it's not, it's not hard. Some schools out there, they actually bring and they demonstrate to the kids, not physically, but you know, as like a, a, a sex toy or, or, or any other object, to demonstrate to the kids how fornication is happening. What are the tools for fornication? That's very important to keep in mind uh, when you're putting your kids in the sex ed class. Once again, we do remind everyone uh, to call in and to participate in the show. We are getting a few messages um, and we are getting a few um, we are getting a few Facebook comments as well. Well, inshallah, we'll get to talk about them. I'll we'll get to mention them very soon, inshallah. Now, last Monday, um, a small group of Austin parents, Austin, Texas parents, uh, protested that the graphic nature of current sex education in school. Now, the protest is called Sex Ed Sit Out. As basic as that. Sex Ed Sit Out. Where parents gathered in Zilk, uh, Zilker Park and made their voices and want their voices to be heard. One parent mentioned, his name is uh, Carl uh, Ayala, he mentioned, or yeah, he mentioned, we need to alert parents about what's going on in their schools. He also continued by saying that teaching a child that they're sexual in nature, and when that happens, they start to engage sooner in sexual activities. And that's actually very valid. That's a valid point. Because when you're telling your kid, especially in a class where you're not, te every individual learns differently. If you're teaching the whole class, that sex education or this is how babies are born or this is how you do this and this and the different forms of sex then the kid will start to imagine things in his mind and then goes to you know uh, websites and, and so on and so forth now Ayala said also talking about sexual health should be left up to the parents in the fifth grade they do somewhat of, of a puberty, then talking about the body and how you're changing, which is all fine and good, but I really do feel like the parents should be the ones doing that. And this is very important as well, because the parent is the one that should, this is, this is not science, this is not math, where the parent needs to know equations and stuff. No, 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 it's not chemistry, you know. The parent has been through that. You know, they're experienced in that area. So why, why not teach your kids? If you're embarrassed and you think that your child might get the wrong idea, trust me when I say when the teacher teaches your son something, your son is either embarrassed because there's a guy sitting in front of him, there's a girl sitting in front of him, so he's not going to ask what's this, what's that. What he'll do is he'll come home, open his iPad or phone, open his uh, or the computer, and searches it. And the first links that come up are pornography. And that's what the problem is. Anyways, let's go ask the expert who has joined us once again, uh, Dr. Hussain Ramaythi uh, from Windsor, Canada. Um, oh, so okay. First, before we ask the expert, let's see what the public has to say about tonight's topic. Let's go and do that. Uh, as far as sex ed is concerned, um, I don't think it should be taught to children. Um, however, I think there should be an option if parents want to put them into classes um, that teach sex ed. Um, but once they reach a certain age, um, for 
you know, boys and girls that could be different. So once they reach the age of maturity, um, maybe that'd be a good time to have the option to do that. Uh, as far as the content, I believe it should be filtered down to be a little more appropriate for, um, for kids of, the, of those ages. Assalamu alaikum. Considering the matter of sex education, it would be very beneficial for our kids depending on how it is taught to them. That would be our main concern about the subject. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, the individuals who have given their opinion. Uh, and at the end of the day, everyone is entitled to their own uh, opinion, especially in hashtag LNT, give your opinion, opinion uh, freely. Another way which children or teenagers can receive information about sexual health and sexual education is through their parents. And this is very important because if the parents do, and I, and I re, do, do repeat myself, if the, if the parents sit down just like that per picture right there, if they sit down and talk to their kids about this very sensitive topic, um, one hour, half hour, you know, just, just give them information and don't give it all at once, gradually give it to them so they can understand uh, and, and you know take it in because it's, it's a lot of information. It's not like one plus two is, 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 is three. Uh, quick maths, it's not. Um, it's, it's, it's a very sensitive topic that you need to talk to your kids about and it's a very recommended method as well. But let's go check out what the expert has to say and what he has to advise us on this topic. So let's go and check that out. Uh, is sex education right for children? Uh, well, this is another topic, interesting topic that I've been chosen to weigh in. Uh, let's look at the topic objectively. Uh, for instance, in the province of Ontario in Canada, uh, there was a huge debate uh, and many actually pr protests and oppositions uh, to a progressive and a racy uh, sexual education curriculum that began from uh, early years of schooling and it included uh, many details of sex organs uh, uh, and, and their properties to subjects uh, concerning uh, sexual orientations and etc. Uh, the ones opposing the curriculum were actually arguing that although sex education is necessary, the new curriculum is not uh, age appropriate. Note the phrase age appropriate. Uh, we have many hadiths actually that indicate, uh, for instance, raise your children from this age uh, to this age uh, in this specific way, and then from this uh, uh, age to that age in this way. And finally, I believe if I do remember exactly, it says from the age of 14 to the age of 20, raise them as your friends. Uh, well, we all know that friends actually discuss a lot of sensitive uh, issues which uh, they can discuss, for instance, with their parents. Uh, why is there such an emphasis on um, creating a friendship, actually, uh, between a parent and a child? I believe one of the reasons would be creating an, uh, an uh, atmosphere that enables these kind of topics to actually be, uh, be discussed uh, with actually uh, maintaining a certain limita a limitation and a status of respect between a child and a, uh, and a parent. Uh, the other actually uh, thing that I wanted to say about this topic would be that um, talking about the sex uh, education, about sexual topics in general, must be like any other science, uh, by that I mean it must be gradual, it must be age sensitive, and it must be uh, comprehension sensitive. So you will start teaching kids, uh, children, math from early uh, stages. And we start by simple concepts like uh, patterns, sequence, uh, and etc. Then as children uh, grow older, uh, we start introducing more complex concepts uh, to a point that uh, their comprehension is actually uh, fully uh, uh, active and they could actually uh, apprehend uh, very you know, hard and 
complicated concepts like algorithm, algebra, uh, and, and geometric uh, concepts. Uh, this actually should apply to uh, sex education. Uh, providing this education actually appropriately from an appropriate age would actually ensure that our children uh, don't grow up with a mentality that objectifies the other gender. For instance, uh, by the time our children grow up and such sensitive concepts are um, discussed with them, a parent, an educator, whether a parent or an educator, should be able to tell uh, that young person that a sexual relation is not a task with a, uh, with a beginning and an end. It's a relationship, it's, uh, it's passion, it's transforming of emotions of, uh, between a man and a woman. Not knowing about these topics um, can lead actually to, uh, can lead us to have young men uh, that have no regard for a woman's feeling and sexual needs. And a young woman who have no knowledge of what sexual desire and pleasure uh, is actually. Uh, this would be catastrophic, uh, to be honest. Uh, the psychological, the emotional, the physical, and ultimately the social implications of these shortcomings impact a family and ultimately an entire society. Thank you. Once again, Alaikum, and we do thank every, uh, Dr. Uh, Hassan Romaniti for joining us tonight uh, and letting us know his opinion on tonight's topic is sex ed right for your kids. Now, uh, moving swiftly to the um, Islamic point of view on this topic. Now, Islam uh, highly recommends that the parents and the grandparents open up to their kids. And as I mentioned earlier, Islam also backs up the, the um, society's point of view on this topic as well. Parents and grandparents need to open up more to their kids and try to teach them about this topic and not be sensitive and not be shy. Don't feel embarrassed because your kids, if, they don't, if, they, if they're not gonna be taught by you, they're gonna be taught by, by something else, uh, by someone else, and especially after uh, they hit puberty. Anything before puberty, uh, puberty um, let it be indirect and inexplicit. Now, the second recommended method is through seminary school, a.k.a. Hausa. Now, this is a male-dominant area, and there, there are houses for, for females as well. Um, so, also, in those sessions, in those classes, the teacher who is teaching those lessons will also teach them, but in a religious, and, and of course, in, in, in an uh, orderly and proper fashion as well. There you have it. There you have the answer for tonight's question. Is sex ed right for your kids? If they're in this area, then of course. And if you don't, you know, if, if, if you don't go with what, what we said, then that's just up to you. This is the view of Islam and the view of hashtag LNT. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Parents, don't feel shy. Don't be embarrassed. Go talk to your kids before they talk to someone else. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.